This is video number 100. Good morning everybody, I'm Steve and this is Greenside Up. Um, thanks to all the new subscribers who have come over, um, I really appreciate that. And I'm especially thankful for the conversation that people are bringing to the when I post a video and then it's discussed in, in the uh, channel comments. I think that's absolutely wonderful. There have been a few notable people who have really, really gone to town and helped me. Right, today we're going to do uh, a few things. I'm going to do something new. I'm going to talk a little bit in a minute about my gardening through my life and what got me started and so on. But we'll talk about that in a minute. I'm going to harvest some carrots, some beans. We're going to have a look around the tunnels. Um, yeah, so it's a bit of a mix today, <laughs> so I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> as, a, as a youngster, sort of almost a toddler, five, six years old, in the school holidays, I spent 90% of my time with my granddad, loved him to bits, and he was a gardener. Now, he wasn't just any old gardener. He became head gardener of the city that he was in, which is Liverpool, Northwest England, Liverpool Parks and Gardens, and they had seven massive parks they had a massive palm house and it's it's just huge and he became head gardener that he was a career gardener and i used to hang off his coattails as a kid i can remember um he had this great big push mower great big cylinder on it that he used to spin round and his lawn was in perfect nick but the great big crossbars came off like this and I used to stand in the middle I'd probably only be about this tall I used to stand in the middle and push it but of course it was granddad behind me he was pushing so I used to help him and and watch him and, and see what he was doing and <clears throat> he taught me a lot and he's actually in in latter years I've realized he taught me a lot more than I initially thought he did I mean more often than not I would turn up to his house and he'd be out in the garden with his hoe and he'd stop and he'd, he'd sort of lean on his hoe like this and watch me making sure I wasn't going to stand on his flower beds or on the edge of the edge of the lawn so that I didn't break the edge of the lawn and he would watch me and, and one day I asked him I said granddad why are you always hoeing he said Stephen you hoe every day with a Y in it and that stuck with me for years and it's only really in the last sort of 10 years that it's made any sense it's basically you keep it on top of the weeds if you've got a hoe in your hands and it's true if, if a weed is it's just a couple of centimeters tall it hoes down so much easier than when it's this tall and then you've got to dig the roots out um, and you can hoe a massive bed i mean i've got a bed there that's 40 foot by uh, 16 foot now when i was cropping in there properly a couple of years ago with the hoe it would take me 10 minutes to hoe that amount of ground but if i let the weeds grow it could take upwards of a couple of days or a couple of mornings to to get the weeds out so getting them when they're small is is key in that and you know i saw my granddad with planting potatoes and growing runner beans and looking after roses and his lawn so a lot of these things sort of sunk in and i was lucky enough to go to work with him as well we'd get on the bus and we'd go to the palm house in sefton park liverpool for any of you out there that are in that area know, know the palm house and we'd have to go and do the lawn with the lord mayor's flowers and take them up to the town hall in, in liverpool itself so I've got all these past experiences and he even had a part-time job uh, of a lady in our, in our village, an elderly lady who no longer managed the garden and we'd go around there and I'd watch him pruning roses and so, so all these th sorts of things stuck in. Now when I got to sort of my very very early teens and just before I started fishing and I joined a fishing club and thoroughly enjoyed the outdoor life. I've always been an outdoors person previous to that I'd been in scouts and cubs so I'd always been out camping and with the scouts and cubs we used to go out and we'd help farmers with uh, trimming the trees and planting new ones planting new hedgerows and and uh, wildflowers and things but with the fishing club we'd actually go and get in the lake and we'd be planting bulrushes and lilies and things and um, plants along the margins of, of the bankside so 
that continued in, in that vein. Um, and then later in life when I started work, um, I did a couple of young people's jobs at first until eventually I, I settled down south in a, a very respectable uh, hotel and I became a, sh became a chef, I trained and became a chef but I was incredibly fortunate because I was living in there and there was a massive field out the back at the very bottom of that field was the hotel's greenhouse and vegetable garden so I could tend that and go and plant my herbs and and tomatoes in the greenhouse and see I've always had that connection to the land whatever I've done I've always found that connection wherever I am you know eventually I moved away from catering and got my own house and that continued you know continued to grow things sporadically yes as work increased or decreased and um, so but I've always had that connection and I've always had that grounded so that's me and that's why I'm here where I am now and it's at the moment um, my partner Anne is not a very well person um, she's confined to a wheelchair and can't get out and about her mobility is shot to bits so I bring the outdoors indoors for her I, I bring her the flowers so that she can enjoy them inside and the fresh fruit and veg uh, and that's my whole instigation for having this allotment here now so that brings us up to speed and what I am and what I'm about and what I've always done so I hope that gives you an insight into me <laughs> So here's my harvested carrots. Um, I've just trimmed them, just trimmed the tops off and given them a quick wash just so they can be seen. Um, there's very, very little sign of carrot fly. I think I've seen them in one or two carrots, which is good. And I've had to throw half a dozen away near enough for a uh, split. But these are them. And this variety is barely come. And it's a variety that I got, I saw uh, Charles Dowdy was growing them. They're a good overall size, but they haven't gone as long as I think they can. And I think that's the relationship between the compost and the soil, as I was describing in, in my last video, the no dig bit. I have to remember that these no dig beds, they're only five months old. They need time to mature. And I think in the years to come, it's gonna get a lot better. So that's barely come. Fairly satisfied with them, but they could be a bit longer. Move on to the next one. These are the autumn. They're either Autumn King or Autumn Giant. I think it's Autumn King. And there's some ripe whoppers in there. Again, short. And that's again with the relationship between the soil and the compost on top, the mulch. Um, but overall, they're brilliant. Brilliant big fat carrots. And I can really chunk those up for casseroles and slow roast through the winter. And that's exactly what I want them for. So they're perfect. I know if they're in proper soil and I've grown them in tubes a few years ago I might flash up a photo of the ones I grew then uh, they were about a foot and a half long fantastic size so again they've got room to move downwards and as these beds mature I think I'll get them 
But what I'm most delighted about is that these carrot boxes, and I'll just swing you around to show you these here, have worked incredibly well. So there's one there, and the lids, and the other one's over there. Now, I was saying in my last video about these beds being having too much nitrogen in, and I stick with that. Uh, I know somebody commented saying that they need more potassium for the roots, but plainly the carrots are, are good enough, they just couldn't stretch the legs down as far as I would have liked. There's plenty of potassium in there, it's just an excess of nitrogen. So to combat that, this bed, and then this bed down here, I'm going to rub some nitrogen from them through the winter by planting wallflowers. That should solve some of the problems and work towards a better soil balance. Right, we're here in the little tunnel and I've got all the plants that are waiting to either grow on or be planted out. Some of them will get planted out tomorrow. There's a good mix of um, veg and uh, flowers in here and some of the flowers for instance will be planted out next spring. Uh, majority of them uh, will be planted out within the next couple of weeks. I say some of them tomorrow. Some in the bed behind me here which I'll show you in a second. Some in the main tunnel and then some in the beds outside. So they're going to get spread about a bit. Um, still finding my feet with everything and what grows well where. So just keep playing, keep experimenting and keep the plants coming. So there we go, that's them in there at the moment. And here is that bed that's behind me. This is what remains of the hotbed from earlier in the season. You can see how much that's sunk. And I've just got a couple of small rows of uh, parsley in there, which I'm going to allow to carry on growing and keep cropping from that. And another small area here. This big green thing in the middle is a pile of bags of compost. I've just covered it just so it's not so obvious I'm storing compost in here. And Here's all the plants, just so you can get a perspective. So that's the little tunnel. So here we are in the main tunnel, and these are the first, first bed of two of my main tomatoes. They're Crimson Crush. There was 10 plants in each bed. Now, I've stripped all the leaves off to allow the fruit to ripen. There's only the very topmost foliage left, and the fruit's ripening. Now, as each plant is cleared of fruit, um, cutting them off at the base and removing all the foliage from the top. So each bed now did have 10 in, but they've now got five plants in with very small amounts of fruit left. As they, as they, uh, that fruit comes off, I'll remove the last ones. Underneath them, I've planted some brassicas and some French beans just around the base of the plants so that while the light's able to get in there, it's being utilized and as soon as those plants are out, the tomato plants that is, the other plants will just be taken over and they'll be well established anyway. Now earlier in the season as the plants were growing up and I was removing side shoots, I was just plunging the side shoots into the ground, I grew them on and I got plants for free. I've got 15 Crimson Crush plants outside which I'll show you on another day and 15 in a bed just to the left here, in fact you can just see some of the foliage on the left there and we'll have a quick look at those now. Okay, here's the 15 plants grown from side shoots. You can see there's fruit all over the bottom of them now. They're all topped out and I've been taking off leaves every week uh, to allow the fruit underneath to ripen in, to, you know, to get the light in. Tomorrow I'll be planting around the base of these plants, uh, to, again to utilise that space while the fruit continues to ripen. And when they're finished, when the plants are finished, We've got no more fruit to ripen on them. I'll snip them off at the ground, leave the roots in the ground, and the plants that I plant tomorrow will be able to carry on growing unimpeded. Come next spring, I'll take all the plants out and all the roots and dig it all over and start again. But that's the ethos there. It's, uh, it's a brilliant thing, and they're all plants for free. So there's 15 there, and there's 15 outside. I'll show you them in another day. But that's fruit I wouldn't otherwise normally have. Now, the thing is with this time of year, a lot of gardeners are taking their fruit out and taking their plants out, taking their unripe fruit, fruit home, putting them in a box or a drawer with a banana to ripen them. And there's nothing wrong to that, with that if you want to do that. 
but I've learned over the last few years if you've got a mild autumn these plants will continue to produce and they will ripen the fruit on the plant which tastes a whole lot better and saves you messing around with box boxes at home and the latest I've ever had fruit is literally uh, a week 10 days before Christmas I've picked the last fruit from tomatoes providing you get a, a mild autumn even if you get a cold spell in October and it stops the plants for a, a week or more once it warms back up again the plants will carry on as long as the cold doesn't kill them so if you can leave them in there plant around them use the ground around them once you clear the leaves off you're not wasting anything you're not losing anything by having that plants in there just work around them and see how long you can keep producing fruit for there's nothing better than having fresh tomatoes for christmas that you've grown yourself i mean it's stunning and so i've got plenty of fruit on there so i'll just keep going with them so here's a shot of some of the fruit uh, there's one there that's ripening now and there's there's plenty of other fruit on and around as i swing around you can see the other side of the little beds there you know there's plenty plenty of fruit there to ripen and I have got more ripening if you look through there the middle there's there's more ripening fruit there so I'll just chuck it and chance it I mean I might get a frost in two weeks and it kill a lot but they're not doing any harm there and tomorrow you'll see this bed again because I'll be planting I'll be planting something in between these plants tomorrow to, to bring them on that's a good tactic while these tomato plants are growing and ripening and all the foliage is off the lights getting in I may as well grow something in between them so I'll get that planted tomorrow now in this bed here there's the tomato plants the foliage at the top and if I pan down now you can see the bottom of the bed all the way down this left side earlier in the season I had marigolds well actually a small variety called tajits all the way down this side so it was lovely in bold yellow colour in flower and that deters the white fly from the tomato plants they eventually died off and replaced them with the war French beans in the middle at the base of these tomato plants now that the lights getting in I've got some red cabbage in here and some Romanesco cabbage and cauliflower up the other end so they're taking advantage of the fact that the foliage has gone from these tomato plants and when these plants eventually come out which won't be long now they've already got a head start they're already growing well and it's the same in this bed but a little bit more dramatic as the plants are much better going here uh, we've got cauliflowers savoy cabbage and purple sprouting broccoli at the base of these plants as you can see they're all growing well and again these tomato plants will be out in a couple of weeks and these plants will just take over if I pan you over I've got a couple of tubs of carrots here which I'm growing through the winter and that's all part of the challenge with um, Tony, Tony C. Smith there's a free bed up there I'll be planting something up there the next couple of days now I've got more dwarf French beans here now they're just starting to the flowers are just starting to change into beans now so they'll be cropping in the next week or two which I'm very pleased about and we move over we've got some flowers here honesty and wallflowers these are the wallflowers that will be taken out of here and planted out in the two big beds in the no dig area again in the next week or so whole load of kale plants over there ready to be picked from and here's the main carrot bed for the challenge with Tony Smith these are all doing very well just been watered so they're looking slightly knocked down but they'll pick up again I'll be thinning those out in the next week or so and over here behind this door and in this bed I've got the um, the parsnip trial somebody asked the question earlier in the year of me back in July was it too late to sow parsnips so I thought I'd have a go so I bought a little packet of seed and it's parsnip palace I think which is I think it's an F1 um, so so them and see where we go with those 
and when and if they'll bulk up. I mean, they're obviously growing. So when I thin these carrots out next week, I'll perhaps thin these out as well and see where we're up to with them. And then just behind them, I've got more brassicas in trays, in pots and trays, waiting to be planted out. That's more plants to go out. So that's it for video number 100. I hope you've enjoyed it. Welcome again to all the new subscribers and thanks for looking in. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I hope you continue to enjoy them as we move forward. Just like to say, please stay safe everyone. Look after yourselves and your nearest and dearest. And I'll see you in a day or two when I come up with a, a planting video and then more sowing seeds. So much more to come. So thanks again. See you soon. Ta-ra now. <laughs>